This episode of Film Ride is brought to you by Domain.com. Today on Film Ride, we talk the Sony A7S versus the A7S II, plus hits and risers. Welcome to Film Ride, the show that takes mystery out of the effects and techniques going to some of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley. And first of all, happy Thanksgiving to happy all those day. who celebrate. I know I'm looking forward to stuffing my face until I pass out on the couch because America. And being Thanksgiving, that means Black Friday is tomorrow if you are, in fact, watching this today on Thanksgiving. So make sure to stick around at the end of the episode for more info on that, including info about two new products. Moving on, recently I went to the Warner Brothers lot to shoot the Batmobiles for another one of the shows that I produce called Variant. If you want to check that out, go right here and you'll see the Batman vs Superman vehicle. The soundstage that we were shooting in, which is the one on the tour that houses these Batmobiles, was pretty dark and we didn't have a ton of time to shoot and weren't allowed to bring in a bunch of lights, so we needed to be quick in and out with a very small footprint. So with that in mind, I decided to go with the A7S for its low light. I grabbed an A7S and an A7S II and an on-cam LED light from light panels. I knew I could make the room work with the A7S's, so all I needed was this one small battery-powered LED to bring up the light on their faces. Then I wrapped a sheet of diffusion around that LED and had someone hold it where I needed it. It worked great and kept us very mobile. But since I had both the A7S and the A7S II, I figured I'd take a look at the difference between the two of them. First things first, let's take a look at what's new with the A7S II. For the most part, the body of the camera looks the same. Slight size difference, but hardly really worth mentioning. But the main list of upgrades that I was interested in are the fact that you can shoot 4K in camera, but you need a UHS-2 Class 3 SD card to use it, which I didn't have, so I couldn't test it. You also now have proper 120 frames per second in camera slow motion, which also needs a higher class SD card. The AF system is improved. The camera boasts 14 stops of dynamic range, reduced rolling shutter, five axis image stabilization and now we have S-Log3 which will give you a more flat profile to broaden your dynamic range. So we definitely have some major upgrades to this new version. Already on paper I'm sold with going for the two over the original but the main thing I want to look at is the image quality that I'm going to get. Everything else is just icing on the camera cake. So with all the settings on both camera identical I grabbed some shots to compare starting with a daytime shot right here. Here we have the A7S, it's looking good. Then we jump to the A7S II and I'm not seeing any difference. Even side by side, it's really kind of impossible to tell which is which. And if we punch to a shadow area around 400%, I'm still not seeing much of a difference. A slight difference in the noise with the A7S II is handling it a bit better there, but not by very much. And I doubt you're gonna be able to see it once YouTube has compressed this video. So no upgrade there, looking pretty much like the same thing. Of course, this is with both cameras at 1080. We can do 4K with the A7S II now. So with that capability, even when delivering in 1080, the two would be able to get a higher quality image since you can overshoot and then bring it down. Of course, you know I love shooting 4K for the extra room to reframe and post as well, so that's also a huge plus. But okay, daylight shots are looking similar, not surprising since it's a bunch of light, best case scenario type thing. So let's do some low light. First, we have the A7S. We're gonna start with how the scene looked to my actual eye. Then we work our way all the way up to 409,000 ISO. Yes, 409,000 sweet hell shocks me every time. Jumping to the A7S II, again, we start from what I was seeing with my eye, then work our way all the way up to the madness that is 409,000. Just crazy talk. Of course, I would never go that high. It's pretty unusable at that level, unless you're shooting documentary or news footage. In that case, it's not ideal, but really great to have in case you have no other options. Off the bat, I'm not seeing too much of a difference, but with them side by side, there is definitely a difference here. And it looks like the advantage is going to the A7S II. Not surprisingly, of course, we're getting a bit better of low light here for sure sure, but I was curious and brought that into After Effects so that I could single out the channels. It looked like the original is actually doing a little bit better noise-wise than the two. However, again, this comes with the caveat of the A7S II is able to do 4K. So in the end, it would win out. The point of all this is to show that if you are shooting and delivering on 1080, the image between these two cameras are comparable. And with an $800 price difference to buy and a $40 per four-day difference to rent, it's worth keeping that in mind if you're on a tight budget. However, if you do have the budget, the two really is a great upgrade with a lot of solid add-ons and I did a whole review on the original a7s right here I went in depth all that stuff still applies to the two plus all the great updates and again all my rentals are from lens pro to go I don't get paid to say that it's just my go-to rental house and as always if you're looking to buy a new camera that you've never used before it's a good idea to rent it first to see how it fits before you go pulling out the credit card so if you do want to rent it to try it out you can get that right here 
Domain.com is where I go to register all my domains. Now they have .club, which is universal, understood globally, and perfect if you're making any kind of website because that's all on the internet. The internet's the all about community and collaboration. Club is that you don't talk about .club. Dot Club's only $9.99 a year. Thousands of great options are still available. And if you use coupon code FILMJUMBO at checkout, you get 35% off, which is only good till November 30th. So you need to jump on it because that's right around the corner. And when you think domain names, think domain.com. Ryan, punch me in the face. No. Well, yeah, okay. Logo. Like I was saying at the beginning, tomorrow's Black Friday, which means our epic sales are on the way, up to 80% off all digital downloads at certain points and other crazy sales. And for Black Friday, this year we decided to release two new products. So the second we release these new products, they're already on sale. First, we have the Writing 101 pack from Seth Worley, which here's a quick promo for that. This digital download pack consists of 11 videos, walking through the basics of story structure, character, theme. There's also a bunch of cool resources and templates to help you get your ideas out of your head and into script form. And my hits and rise pack, which is a pack filled with all kinds of hit sounds, a bunch of which we actually used for our Halloween episode. No, 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 no. Hey, man. <laughs> so inside, I have a few folders, the main goodies, which are the design hits folders, tons of different styles from sci-fi to action, horror, basic trailer hits, and so on. Then we have the risers folder, which consists of a bunch of ramping sounds like this one. Then simple hits, which is exactly what it sounds like. Less design, stripped down hits that could work over music or on their own for your own design. Then assets, which are a bunch of sounds that we recorded to design these hits. So you can go through and use these assets to create your own sounds from scratch. And finally, our bonus tracks, which are two drone-like horror tracks. They're very much sound design type underscore tracks that will fit in most suspense moments. Again, this one's going up on Black Friday and immediately will be on sale along with the Writing 101 pack, but still, if you don't want to pay for sounds like this, you could always make them on your own, which is a lot of fun. To gather the assets, I collected a bunch of crap I could hit with things, like this metal trash can. I set it up in a room with good acoustics and little noise, then recorded me beating the crap out of it. To get a bigger and more full sound with those hits, I recorded with two mics, both our Rode NT5s, which are short shotgun mics, a little less directional than my NTG3, so it works really well for grabbing all them goodies. I placed each mic in a different spot, like one inside the can and another one outside at the end, or on the left and right side of where I'm actually doing the hitting. This way, I can pan the sounds in post to get a massive stereo feel. I also used a big rubber trash can, which worked great for deep, thumpy sounds. To hit them, I mostly used drumsticks and a rubber mallet, but I used other things as well, what you're hitting the object with matters as much as what the object is that you're hitting. So keep that in mind. On top of that, I also use a small rubber tub, a violin, a basic drum kit, and whatever made noise around my house. Like this is a garage door shutting. And this sound here is a metal fence, my microwave door, and that violin I talked about. It's all about gathering a ton of interesting assets and mixing them like crazy to get them where you want them and reverb. Reverb for days, that's one of the main ways I get big sounds. Like for instance, here's without reverb and then with. Massive difference, changes the character of the sound too. So grab some assets, toss them into your sound editor and start toying around, see what goodies you can come up with. Or if you'd rather, check out my Hits and Risers pack which is gonna be on our store right here come Friday or right now, depending on when you're watching this. Logo. So that's it for today. Again, a big happy Thanksgiving to everyone who celebrates. And don't forget about our Black Friday sale, which is tomorrow. If you're watching this on Thanksgiving, tons of massive sales on everything we got. So go Friday. here for more detail because the sales are at they different times of the day. You shut your mouth. My personal favorites this year would be the Writing 101 pack, the Hits and Risers pack, and the Horror Music packs. I've been using and loving all of those lately. But that's it. And I'll see you guys next week when Turkey tries to murder me and my friends. Idiot. Idiot.